Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate this. Thank you to Bold, NextGov. Thank you to, for everyone to come out and see so many friends today. Thank you all. Really appreciate that. Um, really excited to also be here at Con Convene. They have individually wrapped Swedish fish, so you can't, you can't beat that, right? <laughs> Anytime you go to a, a, a meeting space and they've got this, you know, you know you're in for a good, uh, you're in for a good day. So we've got three quick things that we want to do this morning. First thing I want to do is I want to give you guys kind of an overview of FOIA. FOIA affects every federal agency. So if you work in the federal space, FOIA affects you. Second, I want to give you three steps that will enable you or help enable you to get tech into your programs. Everyone has different levels of authority and responsibility in the federal space. But through working with the Chief Foy Officer Council on Technology, on that sub co-chairing that subcommittee, I've had the chance to talk to practitioners across the entire federal family. So these are, I'm going to give you some tried and true steps to bring technology into your program. And then finally, I'm going to show you some of the uh, technology that is transforming FOIA across the federal family and things that we're looking forward to. Um, you know, as Harry was talking about, Lisa talking about, and more people are going to talk about the rise of artificial intelligence, the rise of enhanced processing in the federal space is only growing. So I'm really excited to be here to uh, share some of that. So first off, some disclaimers. I am here representing myself, <laughs> not the Secretary of the Veterans Health Administration, the executive in charge, its subsidiaries, agents, and affiliated things. So we're going to try and have as much fun as we can. Um, but I'm here representing myself, not the, uh, not, the, not the administration. And that enables me to put slides like this up, right? <laughs> so no one had to approve. All right, first, what does FOIA do? FOIA exists for one purpose and one purpose only. The courts have been very consistent in what FOIA exists to do, what its core function is. And that is to illuminate the operations of the federal government. All these little data points, all these points, points of light here, to quote the president, serve to ask for records of the, federal, of the federal government. Anyone, anytime, any place, foreign, foreign, domestic, can ask for records of the federal government. Emails, faxes, notes, reports, anything they want, they can ask for at any time. We statutorily have 20 days to respond to that. And that's a big deal. So let's talk about what this looks like uh, globally. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One thing that you can't ask for. You can't ask for Dorothy's red slippers. People have asked for, for actual objects from the Smithsonian because, again, that's a federal, um, federal agency. So you can't ask for objects. You can only ask for, you can only ask for records. We will not send you um, a copy of Dorothy's, uh, Dorothy's slippers there. So this is what FOIA looks like government-wide. These are the 2018 numbers. 2018, you're approaching 900,000 FOIA requests government-wide. That's a lot of requests. And these can range, right? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> these can range from just short things like give me the emails that John Smith wrote about Jane Smith in this time period. Or it could be give me everything that Secretary A wrote about this on this topic. And it can be incredibly expansive. These are the 18 numbers. The expectation in the field is that these are going to crest over a million in, once we compile all the um, FY19 materials. Now, this is great. We love to illuminate the operations of the federal government. The challenge here in FOIA is that we have a, a very large backlog. So you can see these are the uh, Department of Justice Office, Office of Information Policy numbers. Over 130,000 cases were backlogged last year, meaning that those are requesters that are sitting and waiting for their request. And I'll show you the average weights here in a minute, but this is what it looks like to people doing FOIA. <laughs> An endless stream of requests coming at you. And you have human beings here touching each one of these FOIAs, right? Wrapping up these FOIA packages and sending them down the stream. And it is nonstop for many of these FOIA practitioners. So a lot of the FOIA practitioners feel that they're in this space. It's an endless flow of work, and they have to touch everything by hand. And that's where technology comes into play, and that's where being bold comes into play, and that's why we're all here today. So let's talk about this in terms of dollars, right? We all deal with budgets. FOIA right now is a $550 million a year industry, at a minimum. And this doesn't even begin to take into account the additional costs. There's litigation costs here, processing costs, but also the costs when I get a FOIA request to send out to you and say, give me these records. And then consulting with you. What's important with these records? What do we need to hold back? What do we need to, to give out? 
And here's why. It also gets critical. And this is why technology is so important in this space and in increasing the speed in which we process FOIAs and get the message out. As I mentioned, we have 20 days by statute to get these cases out. 70% of the cases in FY18 didn't get out in 20 days. That means 70% of the people that sent in complex requests can sue us. If you've ever been involved in litigation, <laughs> you understand quickly what this can do to, to a federal agency and why the need for technology improvements and enhancements in this field is so very acute and why we're here today. This is what happens. You have this famous confrontational and cross-examinational kind of um, model. People don't get their requests, they don't get their information, so they get into this, you must be hiding something. They have this approach that you must be hiding something. Well, the truth is a lot of times FOIA professionals just can't find it or they don't have time to do it, right? We don't all have a magic filing cabinet where this stuff is just hanging out. We have to request this information from another program office, bring it in, and then process it, get it approved, and it takes time. So we're working very hard to kind of change that. But if you think this is easy and you want to do this, we're hiring. So go to usajobs.gov, please, or give me your, give me your CV. <laughs> we're, we're talking about hiring managers before. We're definitely hiring. It's a growth industry, as I mentioned. So go ahead and, 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 uh, and give me your application, because I'd be happy to, uh, happy to hire. Now, that confrontational kind of um, paradigm, we've, we've transformed that. We're working very hard to transform that in FOIA. People at, at um, OGIS, the Office of G Government Information Services at the Archives, is working very hard to transform that. The Office of Information Policy, uh, led by Bobby Tablain and OGIS, Alina uh, Simo, the American Society of Access Professionals, we're working really hard to change this paradigm from one of confrontation and one of kind of cross-examination to collaboration and to conversation. And we're really making strides, but we're not going to make those strides unless we're bold, unless we embrace the technology that I'm going to, uh, to show you here soon. Okay, here's a piece about technology. Just because you plug something in, right? <laughs> we all have this experience, right? You take a process, you plug it in, you call it technology. We all know that that's not technology. So let me show you how FOIA used to work. Okay, so you'd have a record, Joe did it, and you'd say, okay, well, we need to take Joe out of here because Joe's a GS5 and Joe didn't make the decision, so we need to take Joe's name out of it. So what we used to do is take our scissors, cut Joe's name out, and send it along. That was, that was how we started. Then we got smart, transformed the field with Sharpies. We took Sharpies, and we'd go, and we'd mark this out, and you could usually see right through it. <laughs> you could still see that Joe did it. So we would make photocopies, right? This is not the most efficient way to be processing records that can be in the tens and the thousands of records, right? Tens of thousands of emails with Sharpie, not to mention the, um, <laughs> what we did to people's noses and brain cells over the years with Sharpie. That's not, the tech that, that's not the tech that we need today. That's not what we need to do. And just electrifying the process like we've done in the past using some software products that still requires a human being to go through and look for every example of Joe or every example of someone's social security number or every example of someone else's protected health information or protected uh, personal information is not, what we're, is not gonna move the ball forward on a million requests per year. So I'm gonna give you some, the, the three ways here that you can get tech into your, into, your, um, into your program, no matter what level of authority you have. So the first lesson is this. Everything that I do at the VHA is designed to be cost effective, service, customer service centric, with an end goal of ensuring that we're a high reliability organization. So you're thinking, I just flew in from somewhere, picked that up out of a business book, right? <laughs> and said, this is what we're gonna do. This is, this is the tip. But really what this comes from is from leadership. We have a secretary at the Veterans Administration who believes in customer service. Not customer service just in the way you might think. Someone requests something, you call them up. Now he talks about customer service being in between the stovepipes, working with everyone inside the organization, right? So that's the first piece. We have an executive in charge who believes in becoming a high reliability organization. We run hospitals. Anyone think that's a good idea to be highly reliable? <laughs> you like the Geico commercials, you're going, well, yeah, I just, I just got reinstated, maybe, <laughs> right? You want to be a high reliability organization if you're taking care of 9 million veterans' health, health each month. You know, if you have all these millions and millions of veterans coming in to uh, receive care, we should probably be a high reliability organization, right? And then finally, I have a senior SES in my chain who um, 
believes if it's good for the veteran and good for the taxpayer, it's the right thing to do. So the first lesson is this. It's not this lesson. It's to align yourself. Whatever your leadership's, leadership has said publicly in your mission statements, wh wherever they have gone, wherever um, she's gone or he's gone, align your organization, align your department that way. Every time I brief when I go out to, to the field, I talk about customer service. I talk about ensuring that we have consistency across our organization, about becoming a high reliability organization and doing it in the most cost effective manner. When, we, when that gets briefed up, people say, oh, well, the, the FOIA program believes in the core values of the, of the VA. So you just take those and, and you run with it. The second piece is find out who is doing what you're doing better and talk to them. Uh, a few years ago, or two years ago, I had the opportunity to get involved with the, um, the Archives Chief FOIA Officer Council. I got to co-chair the technology, the technology committee. I got a chance to learn what everyone's doing. And I'm true confessions here, because we're all friends. Some people were doing it better than I was, right? No matter what you're doing in the federal government, the federal government is so vast that there is someone else out there doing it and probably doing it better. So joining those communities of practice, being a part of the conversation, coming to bold, what you are doing today, just today by virtue of taking this morning out of your busy schedules to come here to bold, that's key. And then finally, in the Christmas season, right? Ask and you might receive, and if you never ask, you won't receive. We've had people that you, you run it up the flagpole. You've done everything perfectly. You've got a great solution. It, you've got, it's cost effective. It, it's aligned with the organization. And the answer is no. Well, if you take that no and you accept that no, each year it will always be no, right? But if instead of taking that no, you continue to ask and you continue to ask, you might not get everything that you need, but you will get most of what you need. And we've seen that example time and time again. So in a few minutes we have left, I want to show you with what embracing those three steps, what those have led to here at the VHA. OK, here's the first piece. I probably have to get here. So as I mentioned, we have all of, this all of these names that we would have to look for individually. Look for Joe, look for the social security number, look for the passport number. All these things that we have to look, look through. Instead, now by embracing technology and embracing this, this solution, we're able to automatically go through and find the names, organization numbers, locations, all of these things that a human being would have to go through with a magic marker or a cursor and do, we don't have to do any longer because we've, we've, started, we've embraced this technology. And let me show you how long it takes, OK? Just in the time that we're here, this is going to be a, like a 500-page document. It's publicly available, so no worries here. No, no one's, uh, <laughs> no one's going to be compromised. So we can do this, this publicly. This is how long it takes for a, a computer program to go through 500 pages. We've got it started, and here it is at 2, right? And that's at 34 seconds on that clock over there. We'll watch as it goes through. We're, up to, we're already at 328. 368. Just as it's going through all that time that it would take you to sip, take a sip from, of uh, coffee, the computer program is going through, and the AI is going through, and it's already pre-redacted all of this information. Now, a human being still has to go through and skim through and check this. Make no mistake, you will never replace a human being in, in this process. But as we'll see here, all of the drudgery, all of the robotic, putting the paper around the chocolate as it goes down the conveyor belt, can be obviated through technology. And so here we go. This is from the Secretary of State. It's a human, human trafficking. And we already see the pre-redactions. So now all a analyst has to do is walk through these redactions and say, yep, go, go, or right click and unredact. Piece of cake. Let me show you one other piece. These, the software that we're embracing in the FOIA space is able to learn. So for example, the president's name will always go out on information. You can never redact or protect the president's name. He's the president of the United States, right? He's, he's earned, earned that, and he will be, um, his name will forever be released in, in FOIA. So what we can do in that example, we just took his name out, and we can, the program can learn as we go along in the program what names always, come, always stay in. So for example, the secretary's name will always be released. The executive in charge will always be released. The FOIA director will always be released, right? So these things will get, us to, will get us to where we need to be in the FOIA space if we can embrace those three, um, those three basic tenets. So we only have a few seconds left. If you don't have, um, probably don't have to, really too much time for questions, but I want to thank you guys. And just 
really appreciate you guys all coming out today to focus on bold, to focus on the solutions that we need to deliver answers for for the American people. Um, yeah, we have 30 seconds. Right. Absolutely. As the director of the Veterans Health Administration, if I couldn't take out health and related information, I should look for a new line of work, right? So, yeah, exactly. No, no, you can take, there's, 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 there's a whole slew of those things they, they can take out. So we're about out of time. No one's, no one's run out of the room. I'll be around in the afternoon if you have any additional questions. But I really want to thank you guys all for taking your time to come out today. And that's all. So thank you all very much.